I love Kid A. Kid A is one of the best albums of the 2000s, one of the most iconic records of all time, uh, one of the most important albums when you're getting into music, particularly alternative experimental music. It opened the gates to electronica um, and different ways of messing with, you, with your audience, basically, and how you continue to pursue that new sound, which really had always do. Um, I put it in as my number three because I don't think it quite adheres together as an album. Okay. Yes. Yeah. No, not not entirely. Not as well as like because you know it's almost like a low a little bit. Yeah. Well, like I feel they're almost like snippets of songs. Okay. Um, I think the second half isn't as strong as the first half. I agree that the second half is, and this one isn't as strong as the first. I mean, the first half, you know, like oh my god, they're just killers. Like everything that's right place. The title track, Kid A, um, How to Disappear Completely, um, what else was we got? Oh, the, the National Anthem. Tree um, Fingers. Tree Fingers, that weird ambient. Ready to go, you got Morning Bell and uh, Motion Picture Soundtrack. But yeah. Idiotech. Oh, Idiotech, yeah. <laughs> That's an amazing song. <laughs> like, I, I actually think Kid A is the second best one. Don't like the which, so, yeah, might as well talk about that again, because I'm number two, which yeah. is your number three. Yeah, um, yeah so, so certainly G G Kid A is, is my number three. To, listen, just because I think the second half isn't as strong as the first half, it's still amazing. Yeah. And it's more, I think with Kid A, it's more about the statement yeah. than the album. Yeah. Um, and I think it's to be admired. You know, there's never been a weirder, quirkier, more uncommercial number one album ever. Yeah. I really can't think of one. No. And especially if, just for bravery. Yeah. Of doing what we did. And, um, yeah. Now, I think that this is actually the album... We're talking about, OK, Computer, to sum it up the time. I think this sums up the this time sums, best. Yeah, yeah. If, if you think of this as a... Ironically, this, is I think, is the best post-9-11 album ever that came out in 2000. Oh! If you think of the way the songs are layered, like, everything in its right place, and then it... It sort of is perfect for... I've heard it described as the soundtrack to like a traumatic event. Yeah. Which I think is perfect. You've got someone trying to rationalise everything in its right place. Like, obviously that's if, you know, something's happened, not being able to function and like... Talking talk. about an unspeakable trauma, like in Kid A, literally it's unspeakable. Yeah. He has to distort his voice. Yeah. Yeah. And then it's like, and then it's got anger, then profound sadness. Then you've got that ambient thing washing over you and stuff and... And then the second half is more scattered and it's more like it's it's such a weird second half like to sum up in sort of a mood. Um, I, I, it does end up on my favourite motion si motion picture yeah, soundtrack. Yeah, one of my Radiohead favourites. Yeah. Yeah. And sleeping pills help me get back to your arms. I think you're crazy. There's something so eerie and disturbing about this album. It's unreal. Yeah, it sticks with you. Yeah. yeah. It properly sticks with you. It, it's one that. He says when you first get into music, you know, you've, you, you've gone through your classic rock phase, yeah. and you've been through your alternative rock phase, and it comes to like Kid A, it completely blows your preconceptions about what popular music can be. Yeah. And that's the best thing, it's like a gateway to like a whole other world of music. Yeah. Um, also a great album to read the reviews of at the time. Oh yeah. The people who hated it, the reviews yeah. are always hilarious about how misguided they are, and like, yeah. uh, they've not even written songs, they've just made noises. <laughs> oh dear. Yeah, you should. You've, have you ever been on Amazon? Yeah, yeah, I've seen them. Yeah, Amazon.com yeah. is the funniest. So there were like a thousand reviews written on the day, and because this album, as you said, was massive, yeah, massive huge, hit, yeah. number one, like sold millions of copies, and then like yeah, everyone, look, half the people hated it. Yeah, it's crazy, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, but it's it's one where like it, it's definitely a grower. Yeah. Um, at first, Monster, I, I didn't like it at all. No, I just didn't like it. It wasn't until I got to the last track where I was a bit like, well, hang on, I think there's something here. Yeah. So I went back and listened to it again. It's like, oh, okay, it's starting to come together a bit more. But I think it helps if you understand who Radiohead were at the time. Yeah. I think it has. Obviously, it's still a fantastic piece of music, like just by itself. But I think it does help if you do know like what who Radiohead were and what they meant and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, what they were going for with it. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, so Kid A is a 10 out of 10 masterpiece. Yeah. It just, I don't think it quite coheres as well in the second half. I can, I can see from my point of view, it's been about going through a trauma, it's been more scattered and all that. But, yeah. Um, yeah. So my second one then, 
Oh man, is is King of, is uh, in rainbows. In rainbows, which is obviously my first. Yeah, I'm born. Film. Yes, I I love this album. I, I love it as well. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I think it was a brilliant idea for them to come back from sort of their crazy years with a proper with a rock album again. Yeah. With with gu guitars. 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 It's still wonderfully, fairly experimental. Yeah. How come I end up where I started? How come I don't where I belong? But it's got a level of warmth to it, which is that's, unprecedented. That, that, that's what's really interesting about the album, because I'd forgotten it was like that, where like, your only real like rocky song is like the second one. Oh yeah. Or whatever it's called. Um, yeah, it called? Um, is it Forced Arp? I think so. No, no. Um, <laughs> There's like, oh yeah, get the, tie, get the, get the lyrics up. Get the it, track listing up here. Body Snatchers. That's it, yeah, Body Snatchers. So I was feeling like real... Rock rocky one, I, I think. Remember, the rest of it's all really like chilled, laid back music. Yeah. So, but then this nude then, which is my favorite Radiohead song, this is like I said, I was just singing the really eerie, like, opening. It's like, don't get any big ideas. It's, it's, it's not, not gonna happen. Not gonna yeah. happen. Well, it's an album in many ways all about dying. Yeah. Like, you've got 15 steps, comes one by one, it comes to us all. Yeah. And it ends in videotape. Which is obviously a song about someone recording their like last before they die. Yeah. All the songs in between, you've got like All I Need, which is like an amazing love song. That's do you know how they achieved that sound? Uh, uh, do you know that when it like explodes, oh, it's yeah. just like a wall of sound. Apparently like um the guy who does the um Paul Thomas Anderson soundtracks. Oh, yeah. Johnny Greenwood. John, Johnny Greenwood, yeah. Yeah, he um he um wanted to he'll put like a string section on. But he didn't get the sound they wanted, so they played every note on it simultaneously. So that's yes. what that sound is. Oh my god! Like when it all when it goes like, oh and then it all explodes at the end. But it's such a warm album, like with this such. It's got such a white, white. It's so wise as well and mature compared to like. I, I obviously I love in in main, um, OK Computer, but I think this is the more this is the wiser, more um, more like mature album. Yeah, I mean. Obviously, that's not in itself. Uh, right, that's that depends on what you want from an album. It's not got the sort of edge that OK Computer has in terms of being more angry. As you say, that's that's one that's about the times. The it's times, in. man. Yeah, it's all it's all about yeah trying to beat new labour and all this stuff that's going on. This well, is bullshit, man. Yeah, because you've even got songs like Electioneering or like, yeah, what's yeah. The, oh it's um no surprise, isn't it? Like. Um, Get rid of the politicians, they don't yeah. speak for us. It's I'll something along those lines. I'll take the quiet life. Yeah. yeah, and it's it's trying to make a statement. This feels like this feels like their mo like uh, easiest album. As in it's not it's not making a statement, it's just them saying something truly universal and truly like yeah. truly wise. That's well like my yeah, it, it was it was intentional after Tom York after after Fob Yorkie's uh, kinda of like um Mental breakdown after Kid A, yeah. where he said that like I I don't want to write songs like that anymore. Yeah, like I'm not interested in writing insular sad songs anymore. It's not what I'm about anymore. That's why yeah. the sound of something like Hail to the Thief or uh, In Rainbows is much warmer. Yeah. Um, well, Hail to the Thief. The reason it's not as good is because it's a transitional album. Yeah. Like it's sort of in, in between this like electronic sound and this chill out sound. It doesn't really know what it is. Yeah. This is them. Perfecting that, and but that's the whole thing. It's more, it's warmer, and it's about again, it's about these big like love and death, these big universal themes. Everyone's written about them, but from a new, right, from a perspective of warmth and wisdom again that you don't get in their earlier stuff. That's why it's my favorite one, and I think it's the one that coheres best as an album. Like I think all ten. Like again, classic track listing sort. It's of very short. It? It's all about forty minutes. Yeah. Um, which is, some people would be disappointed by at the time. I was always disappointed by with King of Limbs because it's only like 35 minutes, but you yeah. know, like, an album doesn't need to be 70 minutes. No, no, you shouldn't judge it based on that kind of uh, quantity. It should I be think, quality. I think the best thing about In Rainbows was at the time when it came out, people couldn't stop talking about the way it was going to be released. Yeah. You, know, you could pay whatever you wanted to get the album. That was like a big thing about it. Then people got the album and they were like, oh man. This is a fantastic album, yeah. and now nobody talks about the way it was released. No, everyone just talks about the album. Yeah, no one talks. No, if you look at any retrospective reviews, and they don't really talk about the way it was released. Or they'll say, you know, people talked about it, you know, the way it was released, and then people got the album, listened to the CD, or put, you know, listened to it on their iPod or whatever, and they're like, oh wow, this is a great album. It's like yeah. Radiohead's best. Just um, ten classic songs, yeah. And it just 
the whole release thing faded away, which is the absolute best thing. Yeah. Like we said, obviously financially it paid off really well for Radiohead. It was like <laughs> the most, probably the most successful album they've ever made. Yeah. Um, yeah, they made, they made loads of money off of that. Yeah. Um, but yes, OK Computer is definitely my favourite Radiohead album. One of my favourite albums of all time. You mean In Rainbows? In Rainbows even, you yes. Said OK Computer. Ah, uh, it's a very confused. Now, yeah. OK Computer is number one for me. Yeah. Uh, for very specific reasons. Yeah. It was the album that made me love Radiohead. Yeah. Bizarrely, that was Kid A for me. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, OK Computer and Kid A were kind of dual for me because I listened to them at a similar time. Yeah. Quite a lot. Um, I think I just go with OK Computer a little bit more just because it leans towards that kind of prog kind of rock music that is a kind of like it's it's built into my DNA kind of thing. Yeah. I can't escape from it. You know, there's something about like riffs and screeching guitar solos that I just kind of love. Yeah. But like I just think it's a perfect mission statement. Yeah. Um, I think the album uh, makes its themes and ideas quite clear from the start and I, I feel it runs right through the whole thing. I actually really like stuff like Fit a Happier as like an interlude. I think it works really well. Yeah. I think there's something horribly eerie and disturbing about it. You know, like the, the voice is saying all these like, you know, typical 90s buzzwords, you know, like... Uh, and we're all more productive, more yeah. Yeah, you know, um, en enjoy um, enjoy a drink every now and then. Continue to see old friends. Go to the gym. Uh, get on better with your work colleagues. All these kind of nineties buds words that all like uh, contradict each other. Yeah. You know, like how uh, you know, like we were told by advertising to want one thing, when we're told to want the complete opposite thing. You know, there'll be an advert for going to the gym and getting fitter, and then there'll be like an advert for fucking McDonald's next, right? You know, so. Yeah. Uh, I love that. I love that little piece. And um, with, with the creepy, like, piano, uh, honky tonk piano background, that kind of ghostly. It's definitely great within the album, yeah. Yeah. Um, but then, like, I, I, I just think they, they hit the whole run with like an amazing sequence of songs. I don't yep. think it lets up until that fear happier section. Um, so you go from airbag to paranoid android to subterranean homesick. Uh, alien, whatever it's called. <laughs> Amazing song that about yeah. the alien abduction. Yeah. High up above, aliens have it, making home movies. And then you've got uh, exit music for a film, which is great. Yeah, oh, amazing, yeah. Yeah, great song. And then obviously Let Down, which is phenomenal. I think that is the best Radiohead song. Yeah. yeah. Oh my god, I get chills just thinking about it. Uh, but I love that riff. I do 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 Let do do down do. and hanging around. Boo -doo. Amazing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Transport motorways and tram lines. Start it. It's, it feels like you're going like some kind of like. It sounds like you're dreaming a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I love it. I, I I love that song. Well, this is a stunning headphone album as well. Oh yeah. It's one to yeah. listen to in the dark with your eyes closed. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, I mean, so you can go from fit to happier. Which is the next one after that. And then, yeah, so I, I do agree with that, that the second half isn't quite strong, but I still think the songs are amazing. I love Karma Police. Well, obviously, Karma that's... Police is Karma just, Police is still side one, it's... So. I was side one, yeah. yeah, yeah. The events fit a happier. Uh, but Karma Police is just a classic song. It's, it's one of the best sort of singles of all time. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Pull me out of the aircraft. Amazing. Um, have you ever seen the video for Karma Police? Yeah, yeah. Directed by, I think... Oh, it's, it's either Chris Cunningham... Or the guy, or Brian Glazer, who directed Under the Skin. What, what's, that one, what's that song from the album goes like, Pull me out of the aircraft. Is that The Tourist? The I think, no, no. No, it's the second to last one, isn't it? I know which one you mean. Yeah, I, I love that one. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah. Well, every single song's incredible. I love um, Climbing Up the Walls. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's got that really weird, like, boom, 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 boom. A really weird, like, percussive, um, yeah, yeah. percussive drums. But you know what I mean? Like, a really deep sound to it. Well the only the only song I think isn't as good as the rest is Electioneering. Yeah. Which is sort of I think just a bit of a generic rock song. I, I like the fact it's on there. It's it's a good song and I think it's not I think it's like a nine instead of a ten. Yeah, well the rest of the album is like a ten. Yeah, like the rest yeah. of the album is so good that, that song being a bit out being like just yeah. very good isn't as good as like masterpieces yeah. around now, it. Now, 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 now. It is it is pretty much yeah. like if you were to say the perfect album it'd probably be Apart from electioneering, be that for how well it summed up the time and like every. I mean, imagine being a like a twenty year old when that came out. Like you know, like <laughs> it would have been the soundtrack to my early twenties. Yeah, <laughs> quite easily. Yeah, 
It's it, it's just one of them lightning in a bottle albums for me. Yeah. It's just I just think that they, it was per, it's a case of perfect timing, the right time for that band. Or you know they were on, on they were on a roll, no pun intended. Yeah. Um, and they just produced this incredible album, which was perfectly summed up the times, and still continues to be relevant today. Because yeah. it's you know like you listen to a lot of albums of the times and stuff like Oasis and Radio uh, Blur, sorry. Yeah. Um, and it's very much of that period. Or suede or, or pulp. Su yeah, exactly. The loads. <laughs> yeah, but if you don't transcend the era no. that they made in, while like with Radiohead it does, it still shocks me how popular they are, considering how experimental. Yeah, 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 yeah. But they they were like the biggest band when this came out. Yeah, that's it. Just massive. But you know, obviously saying that,